because it seems that there is actually a great number of people who believe in what you said right now, and I'm going to clarify it. The permissibility or the legality of wiping over the socks or the leather shoes or the shoes which cover the ankles, as long as you put them on in a state of tahara, as you say, somebody made wudu in the morning, in the evening, any time, then they put on their socks, which cover the ankles. Now they want to make a new wudu. Do they have to take them off? Or if somebody put his boots on or she, her boots on when she was leaving, and now she's going to pray with the boots on outside, does she have to take them off in order to make new wudu? No. That has been confirmed in so many a hadith. And in all the madhahib of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, all there is a general consensus among the scholars. I hate to hear somebody saying, because we are Hanafi, we don't believe in that. We've got to go back to Imam Abu Hanifa and see what did he say in the cigar. The only people who do not believe in wiping over the socks are the Shia. But Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, in some of the books, they put that hadith of wiping over the uh, shoes, the leather socks, in the category of the aqeedah, not in the tahara or the wudu, in faith and belief. Why? Because it distinguishes between the Sunni and others. Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah believe in this as a legal practice. It was narrated by so many hadith in Al-Bukhari or Muslim. And guess what? The most important hadith in this regard is the hadith which is narrated by Ali ibn Abi Talib. May Allah be pleased with him. Whom Shia believe that he is their main source of info. Ali ibn Abi Talib narrated the hadith that the Prophet sallallahu prescribed for us the time frame for wiping over the socks for resident a day and night, and for travelers, uh, three days and three nights. So 24 hours for the resident and 72 hours for the travelers. It is a concession, and some of the scholars believe that if you have your socks on, then it is the sunnah not to take them off, rather you wipe on them. Because of the hadith in which one of the companions was uh, pouring the uh, wadu the water of wudu to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then, when he came to his shoes, he was about to take off his own boots. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or Khuf, he said, "Leave them because I put them on in a state of tahara." So they understood from that that if you have them after you have wudu, then it is better not to take them off in order to make new wudu. Rather, it is better to take that concession of just simply wiping over the socks. So now I hope this is clear. That Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah all agree that wiping over the socks was the practice of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi and the time frame was determined by certain, uh, several hadith. The most prominent of them is the hadith of Ali ibn Abi Talib, as I just mentioned earlier. The second, with regards to the kufi, the head cap, taqiyya, shimag, or imama, or whatever, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi had put on the qalan suwa and the imama and all of that. But it is not neither a must, nor is it a sunnah to wear a particular head cover. It actually undergoes people's customs. If you are living somewhere where people do not normally wear a headwear, can you pray without that? Yes, of course. And he just gave a very uh, amazing reasoning when he said that, I believe that should be an etiquette that when you're standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to dress up uh, fully and you have to cover your head. Let me ask you this. When you perform hajj or umrah and you are in a state of ihram, you are not allowed to wear a kufi. No wonder. I see some people actually wearing the ihram and they insist <laughs> on wearing a kufi while in a state of ihram in order to pray. Now they fall in a big violation because you're not allowed to cover your head which indicates that it is permissible to pray with bare head, without wearing a kufi or a cap. So even if the imam or the khatib, if you are in a, in a country or an area which follow a certain practice and wear a certain head cover, that is okay. Uh, it's a tradition. 
If you want to copy the Prophet Sallallahu then wear the imama. But I do not object to any person who's not wearing any head cover, nor is it a wajib, nor a sunnah to wear a head cover prior to praying. Wallahu ta'ala alam. What's required for men in order to pray is satr al awra from the navel uh, to the knees, and the Prophet Sallallahu forbade one from praying with bare shoulders. Other than that, we pray with the ihram on izar and ridah.